Now, back to the program. Our biggest enemies are the Christians. And when we see Christians acting the way they do, we don't have any questions about why they wouldn't want a Christian to be in the office. So these things have happened because we're not Christians. We may call ourselves Christians, but most of the time we don't really follow the teachings of Jesus. I've said many times they call them Buddhists because they follow the teachings of Buddha. They call them Muslims because they follow the teachings of the Quran. But they call them Christians just because they prayed a little prayer when they were six years old. And they haven't been to church. They don't read their Bible. They don't pray. And yet they still get the privilege to call themselves a Christian. May I say, if you aren't going to church, don't call yourself a Christian. If you're not reading your Bible, if you're not following the teachings of Jesus, then don't call yourself a Christian. You need to, the reason is because you blaspheme the name of Christ if you don't. Wait a minute, Stan, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't have to go to church to be a Christian. (laughs) Okay. Yes, you do. Yes, yes, you do. Well, you got to give me book, chapter, and verse to prove that. Okay. Why should I have to give you book, chapter, and verse to prove to you that to be a Christian, you should go to church? Why should I have to do that? That's your responsibility. It is your responsibility to read the chapters, to read the book, and to know what's in the book. Okay, I'll give you a hint. I'll go ahead and answer your question. Hebrews 10.25. I'll give you part of it. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. That's not all of it. Go and read the whole verse. If you read the whole verse, since it's in the Bible, and since as a Christian we follow the whole Bible, okay, especially to follow the teachings of, of Jesus, okay, so if we do, then that means if we're a Christian, we go to church. Oh, well, I don't like some of the things they do down at the church. Well, you know what? I've started three churches. My wife and I do not report to anyone. So, I mean, we can do in the church what we feel led to do. And there's some things that goes on in my church that I don't necessarily like. I mean, you know, we have the authority to stand up and change it. But sometimes it's just not the best time or the best thing to do. So don't sit there and use that excuse, oh, I don't have to go to church because I don't like what they do down there, okay? You're not going to find a perfect church. Yes, some of them are going to be teaching out of the NIV. And yes, sometimes you feel like you need to stick your finger down your throat. You need to go wash your ears out after going and listen to some guy read out of the NIV. But you still need to go and get involved in church. Maybe you don't like the songs they sing. Maybe the praise and worship is too loud. Maybe this, maybe that. Maybe you don't like the dresses the women wear. Or maybe you don't like the, the way the men treat you. <laughs> Go anyway. Find a church. Well, how do I know which church to go to? Read your Bible. If you read your Bible and you know what's in that, then you'll know the right from the wrong, and you'll know which church to go to. It all boils down back to you. If you're not going to church, it's your fault, not the church's fault. Let me say it again. If you're not going to church, it's your fault, not the church's fault. I don't like what you say. Well, that's why they put knobs on the radio, brother. (laughs) You can't buy me. You can't say, well, if you don't like me, I'm not going to send you a donation. Okay? I'm going to say what I feel like is right, whether you like me or don't. Oh, well, I just don't like that. Well, look, I'm not a pastor. Okay? I'm a pastor at church. I'm a watchman. And there's probably a whole lot of uh, spiritual profit in me. And I tell people like it is. And as a matter of fact, that's kind of what America needs is someone to kind of stand up and spiritually spank them a little bit and tell them to get their act straightened out. And you need to go to church. Why do I need to go to church? Well, from your attitude, you need to go to church. (laughs) It sounds like I'm almost talking to somebody here. Uh, From your attitude, you need to go to church to probably get spiritually spanked a little bit. Yeah, you probably need to have some of the elders take you by the ear and pull you aside and say, look, son, you need to clean up. You need to start here. You need to do this. You need to do that. So that's part of it. Well, what the Bible doesn't say we're supposed to do that. <laughs> you wish it didn't say that. But see, since you haven't read it, you don't know whether it says that or not. It does say that. You also need to go there, yes, to learn the Bible, but don't count on the church to teach you the Bible. You are responsible to read the book. Let me just tell you, when we get to heaven, the only thing we're responsible for is not going to be just do we have the blood of Christ on our heart because he's going to say, what have you done? What kind of fruit do you have? Okay, 
You remember the man that got into the wedding that had the wedding that didn't have a wedding garment on? He said, man, where's your wedding garment? And the Bible says he was speechless. And the Lord of the wedding feast said, bind him hand and foot and cast him into outer darkness. <laughs> so here was a guy that got into heaven, but he didn't have a wedding garment. What is the wedding garment? Oh, see, I'm having to tell you stuff. You read your Bible. You shouldn't be relying on somebody else to tell you everything. Okay, read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. Did I say read your Bible? Read your Bible. <laughs> read your Bible. <laughs> read your Bible. <laughs> okay. Then I won't have to tell you all this stuff. But if you read your Bible, then you'll know the right things to do. Read it. You're responsible for it. King James. If you have another version, start a fire with it. Don't dare give it away because somebody might read it. <laughs> King James is the only version to read. The rest of them are firewood. Throw them away. I don't care how pretty they look like how gold leaf they are, how it has leather on the outside. Stick it in your fireplace. Stick it in your trash. Don't dare give it away. Here's another thing. Get you a good Bible. Don't get some piece of trash where the leaves fall out and everything. A Bible ought to be one of your most precious prized possessions. And may I suggest, which by the way the Prophecy Club carries, a Dakes Bible. It is annotated. That means it has notes. If there is one book that could be handed to you where you could read it and then read the notes so that it would explain it to you, that would be the Dakes Bible. And you read it. All you got to do is read about 15 minutes a day and you read through the Bible in one year. So you can't say, oh, it's too long. It's too complicated. It's too hard. <laughs> you know, we do a lot of difficult things in our life, but reading the Bible should not be one of them that we avoid. Get you a Dakes Bible. Call Prophecy Club. Get it. As a matter of fact, I think we even have them on special now. We offer them for a whole lot less than your bookstore does, whatever it is. 785-266-1112. Okay, Dan, let me get off of my soapbox here. Do people need to go to church, Dan? Well, Stan, of course people need to go to church, and it is in the Word of God in more than one place. Absolutely. For the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and so the Word is the, the Bible. But anyway, people send us dozens of Bibles for the homeless and the poor, which we ask for. We ask them to send us King James large print Bibles. People send us NIV Bibles. You know, I live in the country, and we burn wood in the wintertime, and they make great fire starters because those Bibles are their corruption, and they bring confusion into the church, and they belong in the fireplace, absolutely. <laughs> That's music to my ears, brother. So you burn the Bibles, huh? The NIV, yeah, yep. I, I agree, I agree. They're trash. They are what you call per-versions. <laughs> per-versions <laughs> of the real book. Okay, give us another news article. Okay. We talked about this before. One brand of TV, if hacked, we talked about, it could hear us, and that was Samsung. But now Google TV, Microsoft Comcast, and now Verizon have all submitted patents, applications to create televisions and DVRs that will watch you and listen to you while you watch TV. That's right, folks. The DVR will build profiles about you and decide what kind of commercials to play for you. For like if you're cuddling up next to your wife on the couch, they call it romance and cuddle. Well, they could play a commercial for you for a romantic getaway, a vacation. Or if you're drinking a beer, say a Budweiser, hey, guess what comes on? A Budweiser commercial. And of course, they will give this information to the governments. What do you think, Stan? I think it is the new world order at hand. We've known that every TV since 1985 can and is looking back. They are not just listening, but they are looking back. Every TV can watch and listen to you now. Every phone can listen to you, even when you hang it up, even if it's an old dial tone. You hang it up on the hook, it can still listen to you. It just Let's say if you're the typical home that has a phone in well, more than, probably most rooms have a phone, that means that you can walk through your home, all of those phones that are hung up unless they're unplugged from the wall every one of those the microphone can be made what is called hot on the hook and they can hear you every cell phone can be made to be able to hear you even if it's in your pocket or your purse the only way you can really turn it off is to take the battery out of it and of course many of the new smartphones now you cannot take the battery out 
You can turn it off. They can still track you even if it's turned off. They can still listen to you. And, of course, now they have FaceTime. Every laptop that you buy now has a built-in microphone and a camera. So every, by the way, we've also learned from another newspaper article, a fella discovered that every laptop has a little bitty computer chip in it that registers every keystroke and periodically sends all of those keystrokes into Homeland Security. So believe me, you are tracked and monitored in ways you have no idea. But anyway, time has gone for today. I just want to say thank you. Thank all of you for listening. Please, I don't mean to be too hard. Uh, I love you. I love you. I love you very much. And it is my desire to spend all eternity with you. And unfortunately, sometimes that old spirit comes on me where I've got to uh, straighten people out (laughs) because I love them and I want to see them in heaven. But thank you for listening. And thank you for your prayers. And thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. I just made my new four DVD set, Daniel Verse by Verse version 2.0, with lots of new material. You're going to love it. I used over 400 slides, 350 pictures, 53 maps, 18 charts. Perhaps for the first time in your life, you'll begin to understand Daniel. I answer some tough questions like, have the sorrows begun? Is the tribulation three and a half years or seven? Who are the last six world governments? What bloodline, empire, region does the Antichrist come from? And how to recognize the Antichrist? What does the Antichrist do to gain control? Who is the leopard in prophecy? And what three prophecies still must be fulfilled before Jesus can return? Daniel verse by verse, version 2.0, 8 hours, 4 DVDs, gift of $75, or you can upgrade from 1.0 for a gift of $30 or more. Prophecyclub.com, call 785-266-1112. The next speaker at the Prophecy Club is Prophet Leslie Johnson. She's the author of five books and eight DVDs, given over 5,000 personal prophecies with pinpoint accuracy, such as Arafat would die in the hospital, Kathleen Sebelius would be elected governor of Kansas, a flood would hit El Paso, Texas, all perfectly fulfilled. She'll be speaking on how to spot true or false prophecies. Topics will be, obviously, how to spot a true or false prophecy or prophet, recognize the anointing for the spirit of prophecy, be found guiltless, receive a double blessing, DVD gift of $30. She'll be speaking Saturday, February the 9th at the Prophecy Club, 2540 Avenue K in Plano, on the corner of Park and K, behind the Whataburger. Doors open at 1, speaking from 2 to 5 p.m. Suggest a gift at the door, $10.00. That's How to Spot True or False Prophecies. Saturday, February 9th, Prophecy Club, 2540 Avenue K in Plano. Doors at 1, speaking from 2 to 5. See you there. The next speaker at the Prophecy Club is Doug Metzger, speaking on Will You Survive America's Fall? At the age of 19, Doug had a very radical salvation, and immediately God began to show him visions. He'll speak on visions of coming events and America's demise. Doug was shown unspeakable torment is coming to turn America back to God. Topics will be America the fallen tree, 10 to 1 inflation dollar became worthless, vision of how the church was formed in America, visions of the end of America, vision of a nuclear missile, 12 cities destroyed, a million voices screaming at once, vision of the begging woman, the great betrayal, they ran to Jesus, prayer is protection, the greatest horror and revival, DVD gift of $30. Doug will be speaking Saturday, February 9th at the Prophecy Club, 2540 Avenue K in Plano, corner of Park and K behind the Whataburger. Doors at 6, speaking from 7 to 1030. Gift of $10 at the door. See you there.